second question um, with you. And then with this question, it states that um, the tenant has vacated uh, the property, right? Inspection has been conducted. Um, the landlord wanted to attend the inspection, but arrived uh, two days late for the inspection. Um, the inspection was done then done with the agent and the tenant in the apps of the landlord. So the landlord then came later and then claimed damages. And on top of that, that he stated that he will then use his own contractors to repair the damage, um, but has not came back to the agent or the tenant regarding uh, the amounts relating to the damage and what he would like to the tenant to be liable for. Um, and then, so then the, the agent goes on to say that, um, seeing that the landlord is ignoring all communication on their side, is there perhaps anything that they are permitted to do in order to get um, this finalized at this stage? Um, so look, the quick answer, uh, the quick answer, and I'm not going to refer to specific sections and rules and stuff like that uh, with re relation to the Rental and Housing Act. Uh, but it, it, long story short, the Act specifically requires that certain timeframes are adhered to when dealing with inspections, exit inspections, that they be um, uh, attended to in a certain way. So yes, normally you'd want to have a landlord or his representative. You'd want to have a tenant and his representative attend within a certain period of time. It should be organized within that time. If it's not uh, a different story, then by agreement, you can have it at a different time. But uh, it, it, the Act specifically does require that uh, an inspection be done within a, spe a specified time frame. Now, unfortunately, uh, because of the way that the question's worded, I'm not 100% sure whether uh, the, the landlord would have been available within that time frame or not. Yeah, so that's that's the first point I need to make. So if it was outside of that time frame and everyone's trying to wrap this thing up and the landlord has not availed himself, then having the agent there is, is appropriate. But if the landlord was insisting on being there, um, and it was still within the appropriate time frame uh, in terms of the Rental Housing Act, then... Uh, then agent actually shouldn't have gone ahead with that inspection um, unless somehow, you know, the landlord delegated and allowed the agent to do whatever he wants despite him saying otherwise, which is never the case. So the short answer there is agent should have waited before attending the inspection unless there was truly an issue that it felt within the, uh, fell, uh, fell outside of the time frame. So that's the one thing to bear in mind. Um, once the inspection was conducted, uh, there is obviously a, a, you know, a person is allowed to attend to certain repairs and uh, and immediately after attending to those repairs is entitled to all, must, must refund the balance of the deposit. So now the second point of this, the second uh, answer or aspect of this question is, um, is there a requirement that the landlord use any specific contractors? No, the landlord is actually entitled to use his own contractors. Remember has an obligation to return the property in the condition within which they found it. Like obviously, uh, you know, with things like fair wear and tear isn't their, their, their responsibility. Uh, so certain things that a landlord does, does typically, uh, typically carry. But if you get a property that's been painted, you return it painted. Simple as that, right? So now it also depends on, and then now unfortunately the detail, it comes down to the details. What what has happened? Uh, is the landlord um, hiring a contractor to do more than what um, is required or not? If the landlord is simply appointing a contractor and saying, listen, here's the invoice. This is the cost of you having left the property. You left it in a certain condition. This is the cost it, um, I incurred to bring it to an appropriate condition. You need to pay for it. This is coming out of the deposit. There's nothing wrong with that. So these are two separate aspects. Now, if we try and merge them together, this is where the difficulty starts coming in. Uh, that exit inspection uh, should be final. And uh, so, uh, Nick, unless you've got any thoughts on this, but in my mind, the exit inspection needs to be conducted by both landlord and agent. Unless any of these defects uh, were hidden, as an example, or was you know, something as latent, that you, you really could not find and it's justifiable that you come back later saying, oh, this was just newly discovered. After you're done with this inspection and it's signed off and both parties say that they're happy, 
Um, you're not actually allowed to now come in and start trying to add things to, the, uh, to it after the fact. Um, so if that's the case and the agent did it, uh, the agent did it properly, these things should have been picked up. My gut tells me that um, the tenant's not going to be able to have, uh, sorry, the landlord himself isn't going to have recourse. Now, the worst part of all of this is the fact that the landlord's not communicating with the tenant. It also goes against the Rental Housing Act because the Rental Housing Act is quite strict that, yes, if there are damages, let's say that, um, you know, the landlord was there for the inspection and certain things were picked up and all he had to do now is get a contractor to come in and get, get the invoices and be able to do the repairs. The fact that he's keeping quiet about it and he's not um, communicating or engaging is also a problem because he needs to act quickly and he needs to refund that deposit um, after the, the, the repairs are actually attended to, after he, he quantifies the, the amount of repairs. So his silence is also causing a problem. So putting all of that together, def, the tenant definitely has a recourse towards the rental, oh, not towards, but at the rental housing tribunal, because it sounds to me like there's a whole bunch of things over here that don't fall within um, you know, the allowances provided for in the Act and the timeframes provided for in the Act. So the landlord could actually land up getting into quite a bit of trouble. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I would definitely suggest engagement because that would certainly make things easier on the landlord's part. But from the tenant's part, Rental Housing Act is probably the best bit. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm 100%. I'm clear um, remedies there. Generally, um, um, with lease agreements, um, the inspection, entry, and exit is normally um, always quite dealt with. Um, so, and the, the laws are surrounding that are also quite um, quite, quite clear with timeframes, etc. So, thank you, Bruno, for providing clarity uh, regarding that, and thank you um, um, to our viewers for the question. And that brings us to the end of today's uh, questions and answers. Thank you for everybody, and we'll see you guys again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks.